was pregnant with my first child, I worked the overnight shift at a gas station near my house to pick up some extra hours. I know this may not sound amazing, but this gas station was beautiful. It was one of those full market gas stations, and it was in a really nice section of town. I know most stories that take place in these 24-hour settings are usually in dark and eerie places, but I never once felt that way in this company. Usually after 11 o'clock at night, it was slow. I would spend most of my shift watching YouTube or Netflix on my phone, talking to my fiancé or stocking the shelves. I didn't even get that many overnight truck drivers buying coffee or snacks because the gas station wasn't that close to any highways. It was an easy job, especially being pregnant, and it paid well which was the main reason behind this job. One night early in my shift, a taller man came in. I shouted from behind the counter, Hey there, how you doing this evening? The man didn't respond. He didn't even look in my direction. He walked straight into the bathroom. That wasn't that alarming to me though if I'm being honest. I knew better than most at this point that when you gotta go, you gotta go. So I just figured that he just really had to go to the bathroom. After nearly 20 minutes, I noticed he had never come out of the bathroom. I was a little concerned and was thinking about knocking on the door to make sure he was alright. I slowly started making my way to the bathroom and saw that he had finally come out. I got a good look at his face at this point. He was as normal looking as can be. He was clean shaven with a tan complexion. He had short grey hair that was parted and combed nicely. Even though his hair was grey, he couldn't have been older than 40 years old. He was wearing jeans, a flannel, and work boots that looked really beat up. I got the impression that this guy was just some blue collar worker and he was just stopping to use the restroom. He walked right by me again and didn't say a word. He walked outside but didn't get in any vehicle. He looked like he walked to the side of the building. That's when I noticed that there was no vehicle out there. So whoever this strange man was, he must have walked. That whole ordeal was a little off-putting, but overall I stopped thinking about it just a couple of minutes later since it was uneventful. Part of working these late night shifts is you get your array of strange individuals. As the night continued, I ended up calling my fiancé and we were just talking on the phone passing the time. It had to be at least an hour later. The door opened and to my surprise, it was the same guy. This time I didn't say anything to him, figuring that maybe he spoke another language or something. Well, that theory went out the window instantly because instead of walking to the bathroom, this time he walked right up to the counter and asked in a polite voice, Hello, ma'am. You can't say hello to me? He smiled as he said it, indicating me that he was joking around. I nervously smiled and responded, uh, Sorry about that, sir. Hello, how are, how are you doing this evening? He smiled and only responded with one word in an abrupt tone, Jerky. I jumped back a little bit and said, Excuse me? The man then leaned toward me and in a polite voice changed into a more aggressive voice and he said, I want beef jerky. Where is it? I pointed over to the rack where all the jerky and Slim Jims were located. He smiled at me and now in a polite tone once again he said, I thank you ma'am. He slowly walked over to the beef jerky and stopped once he got to the rack. He was standing completely still when he said to me, You know... You look just like a Disney princess. I was a bit creeped out, but said thank you anyway, just figuring that he was trying to be nice. I look like a lot of things, but one thing I do not look like is a Disney princess, trust me. Without grabbing any jerky, he marched back over to the counter and started to stare at me. I know staring on its own is harmless, but this stare felt intrusive and made me uncomfortable. His eyes were flying around like ping pong balls and he said, yeah, that's it. Disney princess. I can see it now. I gave a little half smirk and apparently that wasn't good enough for this man. He started to shout and I mean quite literally started to scream. What? You don't like Disney? I didn't even have time to respond before he started to shout again. My daughter used to like Disney and now she's just like you. I started to gather that clearly this man wasn't right. I had no idea what that statement was even supposed to mean. His daughter is just like me. As calmly as I could, I said, I I'm sorry if I offended you, I'm just... I he cut me off and started to scream uncontrollably. At this point, he wasn't saying anything that made any sense at all. It was just a lot of gibberish and nonsense, saying things like, Instead of a princess, you all want to be the heroes. 
and even more strangely, I could be a king, and instead, I'm here. It was clear to me that this man was having some sort of nervous breakdown. Thankfully, I never hung up the phone with my fiancé who was witnessing this entire unhinged conversation. He felt like something was clearly not right and he didn't want to take any chances, so he called the police and told them what I was dealing with, an unruly and potentially hostile customer. Well, I have never been more thankful for my fiancé because during the man's rant, he did start becoming hostile. He stormed back over to the beef jerky and knocked over the entire display. Even though this guy was clearly not right, this was the first moment that I actually felt unsafe. After knocking over the display, he turned and looked at me and his eyes were almost indescribable. They looked void of any emotion. At that moment, two cop cars pulled up and the man didn't even flinch. He didn't move. He just stood over by the rack and continued to stare at me. The cops walked inside and to their credit they didn't overreact and remained cool and calm. One of the police officers came to me and made sure that I was alright, which I was. The other officer went over to the man and was talking to him quietly. I couldn't make out any of the words the cop was saying to the man. The man looked upset but didn't lose his temper as he did moments ago, and the officers escorted him out, not in handcuffs or anything like that. They literally just walked outside and had a conversation that lasted a good 20 minutes. One officer left with the man, with the other hanging around at the gas station with me and just making sure the man didn't come back. I have no idea what would have happened if my fiancé wasn't still on the phone and called the police. The man was becoming more and more enraged with every moment. I never saw the guy again, and I never placed any official report, really. After this night, I didn't work another overnight shift. I know some people may have had far worse and more terrifying stories of working overnight and... I feel for those people. However, this was the worst thing that's ever happened to me personally and even though I left with no physical harm, the fear that I felt that evening just looking at that crazed man is something that will always be burned into my brain. Anybody who has ever worked at a fast food restaurant overnight knows just how unique some patrons can be. To add another variable to this already great combination, I worked at a 24-hour McDonald's that was directly off an exit, so it was a frequent stop for truckers, cops, drunks, and anybody looking to get hot food in the middle of the night. As you would expect, I met countless characters that I could describe. I could write a book about every strange and unique human I met while working at that job. I've even had some wild experiences with people who decided to have an all-out brawl right in the middle of the restaurant, but none of these experiences were scary, just crazy to witness, I guess. Only once in the two years that I worked at the restaurant did I experience something that really indeed horrified me. That night started like most nights that I did the overnight shift. I got there at 10, and it was extremely slow. It was always really slow at that time, and then you would get a rush from about 11.30pm to 1.30am, and then depending on the day, it would be sporadic throughout the night. On this night, I was hoping for a slow night. It was just one of those days when I was not feeling it at all. My car wouldn't start in the morning, and my husband tried to figure it out, but unfortunately, cars aren't his strong suit, so I was without a car. On top of that, I felt so under the weather. It happens to me every fall season. I felt like a house fell on me and I just wanted to get under a blanket and pass out, but unfortunately, I got bills to pay, so unless I was extremely sick, calling in was not an option. Thankfully, I was able to take my husband's Silverado truck to work. A little after 2am, my coworker and I were just hanging out. I ended up getting my wish with it being slow. That night was one of the slowest nights I could remember working. Eventually, my coworker went into the office to do some paperwork. I think that was an excuse to go take a nap or something, but I didn't have the energy to call him out. When I was alone at the counter, listening to YouTube on my phone, I heard the bell from the door. It was a peculiar looking man. He wasn't an old man, but he wasn't young either, maybe mid-forties if I had to guess. He looked homeless, but not grungy and dirty, more like he was just not put together right. He was shorter than me, but I'm tall for a woman. He couldn't have weighed more than 130 pounds even with his big winter coat on. As he slowly approached the counter, I asked, Hey there, sir. What can I get you tonight? The man just looked at me and smiled. I wish I could have a picture of that moment. 
The look that he was giving me made me so unsettled. Something about the way he looked at me was just not right, and it gave me the creeps before he even spoke. His eyes were so dark that they looked almost black, and his mouth was just open enough with his smile that I could see his yellow teeth. Finally, he spoke after what seemed like an outrageous amount of time, and I was surprised at the deep southern voice that came out of this little man, and he said, Wow, aren't you gorgeous? I thought I wanted fries, but maybe I'll order something else. Yeah, so I know that's weird and creepy, but working this graveyard shift at a restaurant that gets a lot of customers who are under the influence, I'm used to weird attempts at flirting. So I just smiled and said very politely, Okay, sir, well, when you know what you want, just let me know. The man now grinned from ear to ear, flashing his full set of yellow and gray teeth. He set his hands on the counter, and all I could see were his long and dirty fingernails. Trying not to look visibly disgusted, he spoke up again and said, Forget the fries. What time are you done? Usually something like this, I would just smile and say I'm married and move on with my life, but I don't know if it was because I didn't feel good or maybe because the guy gave me the creeps from the start, but instead, in an annoyed and aggressive voice, I responded with, If you don't want to order any food... You can leave. The man started to laugh as if though I told him a great joke. Before I said or did something that I would regret, I turned around and started knocking on the office door. When my coworker opened the door, he could tell that I was visibly shaken. I told him about the creepy guy who was clearly in sight, and he smirked because he knew right away what I was dealing with. He told me to go take a break and that he would take care of the guy. Without even thinking or looking back, I grabbed my coat and went outside sat in my husband's truck for 15 minutes and just listened to music. I had almost forgotten about that creep up until right before I went back inside. I noticed him wandering on the far side of the parking lot with a to-go bag in his hands. I was relieved that my coworker was able to get rid of him and I decided to wait in the truck for another 5 minutes just in case. I didn't want this creep to see what vehicle mine was. When I finally got back inside, my coworker looked a little freaked out. I asked him about the interaction with that freak and his answer just really freaked me out. He said in a tentative voice, I don't know if I should tell you. I started to jokingly hit his arm and I told him to tell me, to which he complied and he said, that guy was crazy. When I came out to take his order he just kept asking where the girl was. So I told him that you went home for the night and he started to lose his mind, screaming and swearing. I ended up just giving him a free medium fry just to shut him up and get him out of here. Then he turned around and as he was walking out, he said, Tell Monica I said goodbye and I'll see her soon. This little story almost made me faint, mainly because I don't wear a name tag at this job. I had no earthly idea how this man knew my name. For the remainder of the shift, I couldn't focus. I just kept looking over at the door expecting this man to stumble back in, but thankfully, he never did. Close to 4.30 in the morning, I asked if I could leave early. He knew that I wasn't feeling well, and with the creepy guy on my mind, he knew that I just needed to get away. Just to make my night more enjoyable, as I was leaving it started to snow, and it was the first truly hard snowfall of the season, even though fall basically just started. I was thankful to have my husband's truck once again, and I figured if I just took it slow I'd be safe. I couldn't have been more wrong. Only about a half mile from work I ended up driving into a ditch because I couldn't see the road from the snow falling. I was alright and it didn't seem like too much damage, but I couldn't get myself out of the ditch. I called police and surprisingly the cops were there in about a minute. I got out of the truck to greet the cop and that's when it happened. From the bed of the truck, the man from the restaurant jumped out and started to run full speed into the night. I screamed, and then was at a loss for words. The cop didn't know what to do and started to yell at me to tell him what was going on. I finally told him and he radioed some other cops, but they never caught him. We eventually went back to the restaurant and I gave the police my entire story. They looked at the cameras, but it wasn't enough to ever actually catch the guy. The worst part was watching the video of the guy getting into the bed of the truck. It was no more than ten minutes after my break. He came storming back into the parking lot with the food bag still in his hands. He looked around for a few minutes, tried the door, and when it was locked, 
he just jumped into the back. I'm so lucky I drove into a ditch that night because if I hadn't, who knows what would have happened to me. The bag was left in the back of the truck with the fries still in it. This guy never even wanted the food. He knew my name from the start and he knew when I worked and he knew the vehicle that I would have. This happened several years ago and I'm still not quite ready to work overnights again. Always lock your doors and please be careful. Some people really are monsters. The story I'm going to share took place a little over 11 years ago. At the time, I was a nurse at one of our local hospitals and working primarily on the cardiology floor. I was a relatively new employee at the facility, so I was taking pretty much any shift I could get. A lot of my shifts were overnight shifts or shifts that started late afternoon and went through to the middle of the night. At the time, I didn't mind, but looking back on it now, I have no idea how I wasn't in bed by 10pm every night like I am now. There are probably a thousand experiences I've had throughout my career that would make for an interesting story, but there is one that sticks out more than others and still bothers me to this day. On the cardiac floors, we allowed different visitation rules than some of our other floors due to the sometimes unexpected and catastrophic nature of the illnesses. It wouldn't be uncommon to have visitors get approved to stay a majority of the day or night. If a spouse had just experienced a heart attack, it was natural to have someone stay the night even if they had been stabilized and moved to our floor. There was one particular patient who had their spouse with them for two to three days as they recovered and worked to get discharged and released home. They were both very nice people, especially my patient who still remains one of the sweetest people I'd ever met. Her husband, who was nice enough even from the beginning, seemed to have something a little off. I remember the wide smile that he would have when talking to me or coworkers. At first it seemed kind and inviting, but after holding a few minutes of conversation it got kind of uncomfortable. Anyway, the first occurrence happened on the second night of the stay. I was working an overnight shift and it was later in the evening. I was at the nurse's station and saw the light flashing outside the patient's room which notified me that they had used the call button to request something. I made my way to the room and went in to check and see what was going on. When I got there, the lights were off, but the TV was on and the patient looked to be sleeping. I was kind of confused and thought that maybe the patient accidentally hit it in their sleep. Then I heard, Smells good, right behind my ear. I jumped and kind of shrieked and saw that it was the patient's husband. He said, Oh, it was just me playing a little joke and hiding in the bathroom. He stammered and said, Oh, yeah, sorry, you your hair smells good. I just kind of stood there in silence for a second and replied, uh, please let me know if there's anything else either of you need, just only use the call bell if you guys actually need assistance, okay? I left the room and went back to the nurse's station which sat directly across from a bank of elevators. The location was annoying because the old elevators made a loud noise when they went up or down. A few hours had passed and the elevator was making its oh-so-lovely sound again and it dinged to open the doors to our floor. I looked around the desk but no one was there and the doors closed and the elevator went back down. Weird, right? Well, this happened five more times in a row so I finally decided to see who was messing around and calling or sending the elevator. I got into the elevator and it went down to the second floor where the doors opened. Again, no one was there being annoyed, tired, and confused at this point, I went back up to my floor to head back to my desk. When I got back up, the elevator had thankfully stopped its constant noise and movement. However, when I reached for my cup of water, I noticed a folded piece of paper. I thought maybe it was something I left in on one of the patient's rooms or that it was something that I wrote down that I didn't want to forget to do. But when I unfolded it, it said, For my favorite nurse with a small drawing of a rose or some type of flower. I sat it down and looked around to see if there was anyone around. I didn't see anyone outside of another nurse who was all the way at the other end of the hallway coming out of another room. Thankfully, I was able to keep myself busy for most of the night and it was almost time for me to hand off my patients to the next shift. As I was finishing some paperwork, I felt a feeling like someone was behind me or I was being watched. I sat up in my chair and kind of looked around and saw a head sticking out of the doorway of a patient's room. Yep, it was the smells good person from earlier in the night. 
As soon as he saw my gaze going that way, he popped his head back into the doorway. I angled my chair so that I could see the room, but it still looked like my head was facing my computer. And every so often, I could see a head popping out of the doorway and then darting back into the room. I tried to ignore it the best I could so I could just finish my shift and go home and get some sleep. I did just that and returned to work the next day to find that the patient from that room had indeed been discharged and when I was getting my new assignments, one of my colleagues said, I heard you made a new friend last night. I asked what they meant and she said, one of your patients that got discharged today, one of their family members were looking for you and asking for you. They wanted to see if you were here and we told them you were gone and we didn't know when your next shift was. When we told him that you weren't here, his face went from a smile to a frown and he just walked away. And we figured you just made a good impression or something. I just smiled at my coworker and went back to reviewing some charts. I will say that things always seem a little more unnerving on the night shift and I've always wondered if that's our subconscious at work or if weird things really do occur more at night. This is the first time I'm trying to share my story other than with the police the night of the incident. I guess you could argue that I have no real reason to be as freaked out as I am since nothing really happened to me, but mentally I'm still scarred, and the terror I felt at that moment is something that still shakes me to my very core. I used to work for a service that would go to various businesses and clean, mop, and wax the floors. As you may expect, this type of work may be tough when there are workers or customers walking around so the company works in the middle of the night so as not to disturb any of the businesses. I personally only work for this company once a week for some extra money because I was saving for a house with my soon-to-be wife. The business was great, but getting help was not. It had got to a point where the owner would send all of us to different businesses to basically work alone unless it was a big business or a hospital or something. That specific night, I was alone, which I really didn't mind. I put my headphones in and get to work on the floors. It was really mindless work, which was great because, for me, it was easy money. In the town where I lived, there is a small grocery store that is popular among the locals. This store is one of our accounts, and I would usually tackle this entire store by myself once a month. The night started just like every other night. I started with my sweep and then got ready to mop the floors with the machine. Every so often when doing the floors, you must go to the back and empty the machine which is filled with water. While I was draining the hose, I thought that I saw something out of the corner of my eye move on the sales floor. I know nobody was supposed to be in the store, so I figured either my mind was playing tricks on me or maybe my boss showed up, which isn't that unlikely. I paused my music and took my headphones out for a minute. I set my phone and headphones onto the counter next to where I was disposing of the water. I slowly walked back out there and walked around for a minute to see if I could see anything. I walked to the front end of the store and just as I was getting ready to head back to the floor machine, I heard voices. I froze in place for a moment just trying to process what was going on. Within seconds, I realized these were not voices that I was supposed to hear. Without thinking, I jumped into one of the little cashier nooks and stayed hidden. It was at least two men that I could hear and they started to argue. Nothing of note, just bickering back and forth. One of the voices sounded like an older, perhaps middle-aged man, and the other voice that I heard was definitely that of a younger man, maybe 20s. I stayed in that cashier's nook, lying in the fetal position just hoping that whatever was happening was nothing serious. The men sounded like they were standing right next to the cash register that I was hiding behind, and the older man said, Okay, you got the information. Let's get it and get out of here. I heard them walk away, and that's when I grabbed my first glimpse of the intruders. I was able to confirm that it was indeed just two men. One very large man and the other was probably what you may consider an average sized man. They were at the customer desk trying to open what I assumed was a safe or small vault of some kind. At least from my vantage point it looked like a safe. The younger guy was trying to open the vault while the older guy was harassing him saying things like hurry up or I'll knock you out and crazy and equally disturbing things. What I noticed was most scary was that these men were loaded with weapons, like real, actual weapons. They both had several weapons in their waistband, and I didn't dare test these men to see if they knew how to use them. My first instinct was to call the police, but my phone was still in the back with the floor machine. 
I decided the best and most efficient course of action was to stay hidden. If I hid, hopefully this horrifying event would be over soon. Since I didn't have my phone or watch, I don't know how long I was hiding in this cubicle, but it felt like it had been at least ten minutes. And that's when I heard the bigger guy yell, You idiot! And then I heard both men running out of the building. I slowly peeked over the ledge and I didn't see anybody. I stayed hidden for a few minutes until I knew that I was alone. I finally got up and ran towards the back where I left my phone and I immediately called the authorities and my boss. Before I knew it, a middle-aged man was standing in the doorway with a police officer. A brief mix-up ensued as the middle-aged man assumed that I was the one trying to rob the store. The man was the owner of the store, who had got a call from the security company who monitors the store. And somehow, the intruders tripped the alarm and when the police and the owner showed up, well, I looked pretty guilty. Thankfully, it only took a few minutes to clear my name and I was able to give my side of the story. As far as I know, they never caught those guys. At least I've never heard from my boss or anybody else that the robbers were caught. Even if I googled the incident, this doesn't even really come up, leading me to believe the investigation just kind of ended or never really got solved. And this was a horrible and traumatizing night. I assumed that these men had some familiarity with the store since they knew exactly what they were doing. If you ever find yourself in a situation like this, sometimes the best thing to do is to just stay quiet and hidden. Your life is way more important than being a hero. Click the join button to become a member today for exclusive content. Lately, I have been rethinking my career choice. I currently work as a location manager in the city where I live. For those people who may not specifically know what I mean when I say location manager, it just means that I'm responsible for finding locations for directors to film and secure locations for film production. I know it may not seem like a glorious job, but this industry is crazy, and I had to secure any job that I could get. I love movies and the entire entertainment industry, and it has always been a dream to work in this field one way or another. Well, as it turns out, I was quite good at being a location manager. Over time, I was able to build up a little bit of credibility, which made it much easier to secure locations. I worked on a bunch of films for the last several years, some bigger than others, but mostly low-budget films. During my time doing this, I met a ton of famous actors and influential people in the industry. At this point, you're probably wondering why I would be rethinking my career choice. Everything seems super cool. The simple answer is, this world of film and entertainment burns you out quicker than anything else. However, that is not the main reason why I've been truly rethinking my career. In actuality, the straw that broke the camel's back is much darker and more sinister. The last movie I worked on was not a great movie, plain and simple. Everybody is entitled to their opinions, of course, but objectively speaking, this was one of those ultra-sappy movies that you find on the Hallmark channel, and it just felt uninspired. I will say, though, that the crew on this production was amazing. I love the writers and directors, and even some of the actors. We ended up getting to know each other and going out on a couple of occasions. The beauty of working on these smaller productions is that you really get to form a bond with a lot of the crew, which is something I imagine doesn't happen on massive Hollywood film sets. One of the extras in the film, who had a handful of lines, started to hang out with me quite a bit. Her name was Hannah, and like a lot of extras, she was, and I believe still is, an inspiring actress. Hannah is someone that I would describe as remarkably beautiful. When she walked into a room, heads would turn, and that's not even an exaggeration. When the director met her, he was so blown away that he gave her a very minor part in the movie. She literally had like five lines, but I assume that's sort of a big deal for your first movie. In the several weeks that we worked on the movie, Hannah seemed to take a liking to me, which, at first, I was really into. After Hannah's small part, she stuck around with me and helped me. She basically was an unofficial assistant to me and helped me with day-to-day -day tasks, and I made sure that I was able to get her paid for her efforts. Like any production, towards the end of shooting, tensions can get a bit high and people can get short with you. However, what happened on our last day of production was something altogether different. Often on film sets, filming can take place overnight, and that was the case for this final day of production. Hannah was on location with me just helping, but she didn't seem like herself. Hannah was always upbeat and excited, but tonight she was in another world. She was quiet, dismissive, and kind of rude for lack of a better word. 
I'm not sure exactly what time it was, but it was sometime in the middle of the night. We had a small crew of art department guys setting up the location. I was there basically just overseeing everything and Hannah was there just helping me. The director and the actors for the scene were there, but they were all resting in the back room in the building while we were filming inside. When the art guys finished, they all headed out and it got to be just myself and Hannah awake in this location. In all the years I've worked on movies, I had never seen such a light crew. You could tell the feelings and vibes of this project just weren't all there. I tried making conversation with Hannah and joking around with her, but all my efforts sort of just failed. She just kept brushing me off and I honestly didn't really care. I figured once we wrapped the film up, I would never see her again. While I was awkwardly just walking around the set, I heard Hannah shout for me and it sounded like it was coming from a distance. Seconds ago, she was right next to me, so I found it weird that she was in the next room. I rushed in there to make sure that she was okay, and when I got in there, she was standing in the back of the room with the lights off. I could only barely see her. The only lights were the lights shining into the room from the doorway I was now standing in. Anna? Are you alright? What's going on? I said with genuine concern. She just smiled at me and said in an almost seductive voice, and yet it still sounded off, she said, Hi, I have something for you. Well, as you may expect, my mind was racing. I had a feeling that maybe this girl had an interest in me, and now she wanted me to join her in this room alone. I slowly approached her because I was still feeling some apprehension about all of this for some reason. When I got about five feet away from her, I noticed her hand behind her back. I stopped and asked, What do you got behind your back? You're not going to stab me, are you? I laughed, trying to make light of the strange situation. At that moment, Anna started to cry and sob uncontrollably. I didn't know what I did to upset her. Before I could say anything, she shouted, I liked you so much, and all you ever cared about was a stupid movie. I hate you. As I tried to take all of that in, she threw a knife from behind her back onto the ground and ran right through me and knocked me off my feet. My heart was beating out of my chest at this point, and when I approached the wall where I was standing, I looked down and it was in fact a knife. A real knife. For some reason I never reported this to the director or the authorities. I have no idea why, I just figured since nothing happened I'm better off just leaving it alone. The more time that passes, the more I think about that night. What would have happened if I kept walking toward her? Would she have stabbed me or was it all just a trick? If it wasn't the middle of the night, would she have even tried anything like this, and perhaps most horrifying, I have no idea where she is or where she went. She's got no social media anymore, I looked and no other film credits, at least that I could find. This industry is crazy, man. You meet a lot of strange people who sometimes just aren't all there. Hannah, for example, is a sweet, beautiful girl, and one night, I don't know if it was the sleep deprivation or all the hours we were working, but she just lost it. I think the highs and lows of this industry have always taken enough toll on me. As I've stated, I assume she's probably still trying to act, probably under another name, but honestly, this poor girl has some inner demons and it wouldn't surprise me one bit if the demons in her head won. So let me first say... I don't know if this story I'm about to tell is super scary, but it was for sure the strangest thing that's ever happened to me. At the moment, it was really upsetting. It wasn't until I reflected on the evening that I realized just how strange the occurrence really was. Five years ago, I worked as a security guard for the strip mall. If you're not familiar with what a strip mall is, it's just like a block of stores in a single lot that is usually connected by one big building. The complex that I worked for was a bigger building consisting of either eight or nine stores and a restaurant. The strip mall was new at the time and the management team wanted to keep the area clear of trouble or potential robbers. I figured someone trying to rob these stores would be a long shot since the surrounding area was a very high class neighborhood and there really was no crime. I took the job mainly because I needed the money. I figured it would be easy because I could sit in my car in a back office that was located in the back of the building complex and just listen to podcasts or audiobooks. The back office that I mentioned served almost like a central hub for all the stores in the strip mall. For each of the store's back stock rooms, you could walk out into another hallway, 
which led down a long, narrow corridor that led directly to the office. It was a small little room with monitors connected to the cameras in each one of the stores. Most nights, I just sat in the back office and waited until about 6.30 a.m. For all the years I did this job, only once did I ever have an intruder, and it still freaks me out to this day. The very first thing I did every night at 11 p.m. when I showed up to work was to check every lock on the door of every store. I made sure everything is buttoned up tight just in case, and I usually then would walk around the entire strip mall parking lot. I would like to tell you that it was to monitor the surroundings, but the real reason was to just stretch my legs. I usually did this walk several times a shift. That night at around 2 in the morning, I was still sitting in the office. I thought I heard a loud crashing sound. Whatever it was, it was loud enough to have made me jump. And the first thing I did was check all the cameras and had made sure none of the alarms were going off. Everything still looked locked up and it appeared like nothing was going on. Whatever noise I had heard, I ended up just chalking it up to some sort of stock in one of the stores falling or something. I did a quick walk by all the storefronts and saw nothing out of place or broken and all the locks were still locked. When I got back to the office was when I noticed something strange. In one of the monitors, which was a CCT camera feed from one of the stores, I could see what looked like a faint light. I just walked by all the stores less than two minutes prior and I saw no lights, so whatever the strange glow was had just appeared. The cameras in these stores were not so insanely high-tech, so I wasn't able to adjust the cameras to see any more of the store. Only this one section. The store was an electronics store of some sort. They did sell all kinds of tech and electronics, but their main selling point was that they would rent out cameras and microphones and all sorts of technological equipment. I made my way through the narrow hallway to the back room of the electronics store. From the back room, I could see the flickering of light through the door that led to the store. Before going through the double doors which separated the store's back room and the sales floor, I looked around the window of the double door to see if I could locate any intruder. To my amazement and horror, there were two elderly people standing in front of a giant TV, just watching a solid blue screen that said, No Signal. I had no idea how these two had gotten into the store. I checked the lock more than once and there was clearly no sign of forced entry. I waited for several minutes to see if they had moved or talked or did anything, but they never moved. They stood there like statues watching this blue screen. Eventually, I decided to confront them. I made my way onto the sales floor slowly and asked what those two were doing and that they couldn't be in here. The old woman of the two turned to me, whom I could clearly now see was a very old woman, and she said, I'm sorry, hon. This is the only show that makes him happy. I had no idea what she was talking about, but she had tears in her eyes. The man never turned around, but stood in an almost hunched over position and continued to stare at the TV. After a moment, the woman turned back around and started to make weird noises with her mouth, like humming or something, but it sounded very unpleasant. I went into the back room and alerted my boss, who then alerted the authorities. It was clear that these older folk needed some help, seriously. When I walked back onto the sales floor, they were gone. I started to run around the room rather frantically because I still didn't know if these two were any danger to me. When I looked up out of the window, I saw the two older folks at the end of the parking lot. Whenever I made my call, they must have left. I noticed at this point the door was unlocked, so I know they left out the front door, but that still never explained how they had gotten into the store in the first place. The only thing I can think of was that they were in the store prior to them closing it, which is still unsettling. I tried shouting to them to come back, but they just kept going, and then without notice, they both just darted into a heavily forested area that sat at the end of the strip mall complex. The fact that these two older people moved that quickly was honestly remarkable. The police showed up moments later and I explained the entire event to them. They actually laughed because the story seemed so strange and unbelievable and even though it may have been funny to them, in the moment it was terrifying to me. Imagine just seeing two very old people watching a blank TV in the middle of the night when you're all alone. I've read enough crazy news stories to know that just about anything is possible. After talking to the store owner, they were just as shocked and freaked out as I was. They said that they didn't know of anyone who fits that description, and I guess the police looked through dozens of hours of CC footage and never could find when and where these two people had gotten into the building. I always think about that night, and 
really just how creepy and weird it truly is. In a lot of ways, I feel bad because it just shows that the mind really does go after a while. In my mid-twenties, I was trying to figure out a lot of aspects of my life and I was trying to get my future in order. I was never objectively a bad person, but somehow, I always seemed to fall through the cracks. I finished near the bottom of my class with my GPA, never went to college, and experimented with some extracurricular things that you could say are illegal. I was never in trouble, but I also never brought anything of substance to the table. I was about a month away from my 26th birthday when I met Janelle, and that's when I decided it was time to use my brain and become a decent member of society instead of a burnout. Due to my disturbing resume or lack thereof at this point in my life, I was finding it very hard to find a job. Even jobs that you may think anybody can get, I wouldn't even get a call back. Even if I went out of my way to reach back out to them to follow up on applications, I still would never have my call returned. It hit me hard. Just as I was about to give up, like I always did, Janelle found me an amazing job. Not glamorous by any means, but for someone like me it was amazing. The job was for an overnight warehouse worker. I would work from 9pm until 6.30am loading up pallets with boxes. Though the main premise sounds simple enough, and it was, physically the job was tough. We never had enough help and it was extremely hard to keep help once we would get workers in the door. I found myself a lot of time working alone until finally the company downsized. We started to work until 4.30 in the morning instead of 6.30 and the little help that we had was spread thin. When I was working, I would put headphones on and just get into the zone. I didn't bother talking to anybody or even getting to know anyone because chances are I wouldn't be seeing them in a week or two and honestly, talking just distracted me and I was all about getting my job done. One night when I was nearing the end of my shift, I noticed a small looking man standing about 5 feet away from me. I didn't say anything at first because I figured it was a new employee just watching how I was doing things. When I finished, I took my headphones and asked the guy if he needed anything, and he responded, Yeah, man, I hate to ask, but I was wondering if I could get a ride home. I found it weird considering I had no idea who this guy was and didn't even recognize his face as one of the workers. Being the kind of guy that I am, I told him that I would for some gas money. He responded almost nervously and said, Yeah, yeah, man, of course, I, I got you. I told the guy to give me a few minutes to grab my things and punch out of my shift and to meet me outside. He nodded and agreed. I felt weird about the situation, but I'd been in his shoes before, I kept telling myself. I told one of the other guys when I was punching out that I had to give the weird new guy a ride home, and the other employees made a strange face and asked, The new guy? I don't remember seeing a new guy. We both shrugged it off, just assuming that's how this place operates these days. I went outside a few minutes later and saw the strange guy waiting next to my car. What I didn't find alarming then, and I wish I would have, was that I'd never told the guy which car I drove and yet he was already waiting by my car. We started to drive, and right away things were getting weird. I asked him where he lived and he gave me some vague and confusing answer. Uh, I live on Maple Drive, well, well no, not, not anymore, I, I live uh, near the park. You know Rose Park by the edge of the city? I nodded and said, Okay man, near the park. Where near the park? I just, just want to know where I'm dropping you off, dude. The man said nothing for a few seconds and then said, Just near the park. Head towards the park and I'll tell you where to go. I'm still kind of in awe of my stupidity as I write this. You have to understand at this point in my life I really didn't care about much and just wanted to get from point A to point B in my day-to-day -day life. I didn't question really anything. When we got close to the park, the man finally spoke up. Turn here. I stopped the car for a moment and said to the guy, Are you sure? This doesn't really look like a street. The man just kept saying, y Yeah, in his shaky voice as he nodded intently. Against my better judgment, I turned down the long, dark path. This was for sure not a road. It was a dirt path and I couldn't see anything. I turned on my high beams and thankfully it was just in time. Obstructing the road in front of me was a massive fallen tree. Oh dude, 
Ugh. Ugh. Looks like we're going to have to go another way or something. I'm not getting by this tree. The man didn't say anything. I looked over at him and he had his hands in his hoodie. While I was looking at him, he said, Get out of the car now. He kept moving his hands inside his sweatshirt as if though he was trying to grab something he had concealed underneath. When I looked up out of the windshield, I saw two more masked men coming from the side of the fallen tree. My heart was racing out of my chest at this point. I didn't know if I was going to get robbed or worse. The man in my car then screamed at the top of his lungs and said, Get out now! I slowly started to open my car door and noticed another two men behind my car also wearing masks. When my door was open, I started to step out, and I noticed the man in my car start to get out of my vehicle as well, and that's when I made the single most daring decision of my life. As I noticed him clearly outside of the car, I jumped back into the driver's seat and reversed as fast as I could. Thankfully, he never ordered me to shut the car off, so the car was running this entire time. I may have bumped into one of the potential robbers, or maybe it was a big tree branch I wasn't sure in the heat of the moment. When I got to the end of the dark path and was putting my car into drive so I could peel off, I looked back one last time and I saw all five men sprinting directly at my car. They all appeared to be holding something in their hands, but I didn't bother to find out what they were carrying. I didn't alert the police for some reason, as when I got home I was just so tense and anxious that I felt nauseous and just needed to lie down. I called my managers the next day and told them about the incident to which they replied, we didn't hire anybody new in the last couple of weeks, and I felt even more sick after hearing that. We looked at the cameras and saw that this man basically came out of the shadows when I parked my car for that night shift. He waited by my car for several hours and then went inside. Nobody said anything to this strange guy because help was spread so thin, basically nobody noticed him. He was watching me finish my shift for about an hour when he finally approached me. My manager said that they contacted the police, but... I was never questioned, which I found kind of suspicious, leading me to believe that they never actually reported it. To this day, I've never reported it, and honestly, it was so long ago at this point that I'm sure nothing could really be done. I only worked there for another month or so after the incident, and I never saw that strange man again. The only good thing that came from this horrible event was that the company started locking the doors for these overnight shifts, which you may think is obvious but you'd be surprised at just how relaxed certain businesses are when the managers aren't around. My advice to anybody who may be reading this, be careful, and if something feels weird, chances are you're right. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. I release new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7pm EST. And there are super fun live streams every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday night. I'd love to see you there. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, r slash let's read official. And you might even hear your story featured on the next video. And if you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations and bonus content over on Patreon, or click that big join button to hear about the extra perks offered for the channel. And check out the Let's Read podcast, where you can hear all of these stories in big compilations and save huge on data. Look at it anywhere you listen to podcasts. All links in the description below. Thanks so much, friends. And remember, thereafter, me lucky charms. <laughs>